Hello everyone, this is Katisha and welcome to another episode of Kitty Crow Creations. Today we're going to continue our dog series. So far in our dog series we've done Buddy and Chloe, the beautiful uh, pit bulls that belong to my best friend Deanna. We've also done a French bulldog called Cutie Pie. And here recently we just finished creating a tutorial on an Alaskan Husky called Hercules. So we are going to continue our dog series and today we're going to paint another French Bulldog and his name is Jet. So I hope you get a chance to paint Jet. He's so adorable. And um, as always, please feel free to hit the subscription button and the notification button so that way you can be aware of all the videos that are going to be coming in the future because after we finish the dog series we're probably going to focus on a landscape series and then a flower series and i like to do series to kind of keep things kind of grouped together and that way you can learn a lot about certain things but uh, please hit the subscription button and the notification button so that way you can be notified and that way you don't miss out on anything okay so we're going to go ahead and get started what I've done is I've pre-painted my, my canvas black. You can buy um, black canvases from Michael's, Hobby Lobby, or where I get a lot of my uh, art supplies at a really good price is Jerry's Artorama. And, um, but if you can't find one that's, um, you can't find a black canvas, you can paint it with black gesso or you can paint it with black paint. I just uh, um, pre-prepared mine with black paint. Now. Talking about preparing your canvases, it is a recommendation of mine. I learned it from a wonderful artist named Ginger Cook. And maybe one day Ginger Cook will see one of my videos. If you're watching Ginger, hi, you're a great inspiration. But anyway, um, she recommends to always paint your uh, canvases with some type of color. To, so basically to have a background color because what it does, it allows the paint to go on easier. Because otherwise, the canvas, especially if you're using the canvases that you buy at Hobby Lobby and Michaels and places like that, the really inexpensive canvases, they soak up a lot of paint. That's just a, a suggestion. Let's go ahead and get started. In addition to preparing my canvas with black paint, I also transferred on the image. And to transfer on the image, I use Sorel transfer paper. You can buy this at Amazon. You can buy it in the package with, that has individual sheets or you can buy it by the roll. And as far as the traceable, when I'm doing a painting, I don't want you to get overwhelmed with trying to figure out how to draw this because this is really a painting class. I eventually will offer some lessons on how to draw, but for right now we wanna focus on painting and that's what I want you to focus on. I don't want you worrying about how to draw this image. So what I've done, I've created traceables and photo references and I have them available on my website at www.kittycrowcreations.com. So this is the traceable and I transfer it on with the Sorel transfer paper. If, if you realize that you print out the traceable and it's too small, you can go on to Rosterbater. Uh, it's a website called Rosterbater and it will help you um, enlarge the, the image. And I have a video that I'll be uploading onto YouTube really soon to show you how to, to um, adjust your image on Rosterbader. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, um, here's a photo reference, it'd be so cute. So in the photo reference, you're looking at that, and you're saying, okay, so how am I gonna make this, the, the, the sheet that he's on? Because obviously he looks like he's on a bed and he's lying on the sheets or he might be on a pillow. If you look closely at the image, you see some, um, some white with some gray and some uh, dark shadows. It's a combination of gray and brown. And so that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to give an illusion of a blanket by trying to incorporate the creases in the blanket. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start off with uh, white. I have some, these are my colors, by the way. I have some titanium white, burnt umber, ultramarine blue. Cad red medium and um, titanium white. I might be using yellow ochre and burnt sienna, but I don't want you to put it out yet because if we're not going to use it, I don't want you to waste your paint. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start off with just white. So have fun with this. We're just going to go through and start painting. 
And I'm using my usual, um, I think this is a half inch angle brush, but I love using angle brushes because it really allows you to be flexible with how you use it. Like if I wanna get those sharp edges, I can turn it on the chisel part. And if I want to cover more area with the paint, I just use the flat side. You're gonna see me as I'm painting on the white to the blank, I mean to the sheet, that I'm gonna be adding some, um, some dark to it to give an illusion of depth and to give the creases in the blanket. Trying to put a lot of paint on there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna rinse out my brush really fast. And before I move on, I wanna mix my dark mixture. The same mixture that I'm gonna use for um, my dog. I'm gonna take some Burn Umber, and I'm gonna mix it in the middle here, and some Mars Black, and I'm gonna mix it together. Okay, I'm gonna rinse my brush off again. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I wanna take that color, I'm gonna put a little bit more dark in it because I really want it almost black. I wanna take it and put some of that in here because, and I'm barely raking over the top of it. And the reason being is because when you're dealing with white, white tends to pick up the, um, the colors of the image around it. So since jet is a dark color, obviously it's gonna be picking up the color of jet. So that's why I'm coloring it this color. Cause if I just made this plain white, it wouldn't have any depth to it. And what I mean by depth, it wouldn't have any realism to it. So that's why I'm, I'm doing that. So rinsing my brush out again. And now I'm gonna continue putting on my white. I'm gonna go ahead and just come on over here and put some of the white. So if you tuned in last time when we painted Cutie Pie, Octavia, oh, speaking of Octavia, I have Octavia managing the microphone and the camera. Yay, Octavia. Hi guys. Octavia, Octavia is so wonderful. She's my niece and she does the camera work. So, so basically we wouldn't have a video if it weren't for Octavia. So thank you, Octavia. And last time when we did, we did the painting cutie pie, we gave a lot of information about bulldog. I mean, French bulldogs, their, their nickname is called Frenchy. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm going back into my dark mixture and I'm gonna put some up here. Um, let me see, that's, just a minute, that needs to be a little bit darker. It has, it has too much brown in it. But anyway, we know that these, these dogs are adorable and they make wonderful um, house pets. And um, they originally uh, originated in England and the most popular ones, I think, to Octavia were the black and white ones. Yes. And that's why we painted Cutie Pie, because Cutie Pie was in high demand. I'm wiping off some of that paint so I can kind of blend it in. So I'm trying to create a crease over here. If you see me wiping my brush, I'm not wiping my brush on my clothes. Those who watch my videos know that I have a towel on my lap and sometimes I just like to wipe the paint off instead of putting it in the, in the water. So I'm gonna make that a little bit darker right here because I wanna make a crease. That's the thing about painting something that's white. You have to give, you have to give an illusion of what it's trying to say because Painting with white can be difficult at times. Okay, so I'm gonna come over here and start painting all of this part. And so since Jet, our French bulldog that we're painting, since he's 
kind of like a combination of black but some some burnt umber we're going to use our background to our advantage so since it's already dark back here we don't have to do very much work and that i did that on purpose So anyway, so French Bulldogs, they originated from England, and I guess some factory workers who owned the dogs wanted to take the dogs with them because they made such good house pets. And um, there was a group of factory workers, I don't know if they worked in a linen factory or something like that. They, um, they migrated to, to France, and so that's, and they took, the French Bulldogs with them, and hence, that's where they got the name, Frenchies. This, so when you're doing this, um, the sheets, you gotta, I'm trying my best to barely touch the canvas with this dark color because I, I just, I just want it to be um, kind of like a shadow in a sense so we can show that this is kind of like a crease and we'll go back and we'll refine the creases later but so right here is really dark so we'll just make that part really dark i'm going to wipe off my brush wipe some more off of it because it's still too much paint get some of my white trying not to contaminate the white. If, if I look like I'm overworking it too much, I'll just, I'll just come back to this area in a minute. So I'm gonna rinse out my brush and I'm gonna put some more on my white. Okay, so this part's white. And then this one kind of goes like this. It's kind of interesting. It's kind of coming down like that. So I'm going to have to remember that because we have to leave this little part open to put our crease. I'm going to try to leave this little black open spot so I can see where I need to put my creases. Hold the canvas up a little bit. And, and I, I want to talk about brushes. Like I said, I'm using my, um, I am using my um, angle brush, but don't get, don't get overwhelmed about the type of brush that you use. I will say that the brand Simply Simmons is a good uh, type of brush. And also the Michaels Artist Loft brushes, um, I find out they're pretty good too. I, that's what I'm using right now. And I would say that it's pretty good. I'm trying to get that paint on there. When I saw this, this bulldog, I just thought he was so cute. But all the Frenchies are cute. And, and last time, Octavia, we're talking about some of the famous people who have these dogs um, that we know of, that we read about, is like Dwayne Johnson, Lady Gaga. I can't remember who else. And they're very expensive. They're expensive dogs. That's probably why you don't hear, I don't know if you hear much, you know, many people talk about them. It's probably because they're so expensive. So yes, please feel free to go onto my website and um, I try to make it easy for you to have access to all the resources so you're not trying to hunt, hunt 
for the resources to do the project. But I hope you give it a try. I know that um, I know a lot of people will say, oh, it's too long or oh, I can't do it. But once you start it, it's actually fun and it's not as hard as you think. And it's so rewarding. And during this um, COVID-19 situation that we're in, this is a perfect way to get a sense of peace of mind. It really is. It's very relaxing. So that's, this is what I do for my relaxation. Or even if you feel inspired, if there's, you know, go out into your backyard and see if there's something out there that, that you really like. Like maybe you have some roses outside and just sit out there and take a picture of the, you know, take a picture of the roses and bring it back in and paint it or sit there and paint it and, and sit there and observe it and paint it. That's called plain air painting, by the way, when you're painting from real life. So what I'm doing, I'm trying to now mark out my creases. I'm making the, the dark lines um, a little bit darker and more visible. And then I'm trying to put some white in there to blend it in because I want to start showing those creases. Like this, this is a real big crease right here. This one is. Got to put some of that dark mixture right here. Going to put a little white in there because there we go. And that's amazing. Um, th this painting really is, um, it's really, I feel like a, a lesson in values because all you really have mainly are we well, have some red and you have some uh, burn umber in there, but really what you mainly have is black and uh, black and white and you're trying to play around with the colors to get a sense of realism. And that's what I, that's what I really like about it. And it's a very good lesson because you really need to learn about your shadows, um, your shadows and your highlights or your, your, your darks and your lights. Cause that's what gives your painting I keep saying that word depth and depth and what I mean by depth I mean it gives it realism and you know what you, when you look at this you're probably thinking you know this do, this doesn't look right it looks kind of muddy it does it looks kind of distorted and reason being is that you it's good if you stand if you stand back and take a look at, at your painting because sometimes if you, you're working on it for too long like right now I'm going to go back and put some more white to highlight certain areas. And I want to put some there, I want to put some here, but I don't want that much paint on there. But I don't want to lose all of my shadow color. Because after all, remember the sheet is white, so we got to make sure there's some still some white in there. Just going to dry brush that. You hear, hear I'm scrubbing it? Scrubbing it. Scrubbing it. Okay, I'm going to come over here. There's some more creases over here. So I'm going to put some creases, a little bit of that dark color. So I'm going to kind of go like that. And this one's going to go like this. I'm going to put a little bit of the white to help me mix in the color. A little bit more. Turn around so you can see it better. How's that? I'm tr trying to make sure it doesn't have like a like a a glare or anything like that. Where I feel like the edges are too sharp, I'm gonna try to like scrub it and smooth it out some because I don't like those those harsh edges because if you have a okay if you look in real life I want to ask you a question in real life do you see harsh edges no you don't you don't see harsh edges so your goal is to try not to put them where they don't belong okay so that's a harsh edge but I needed that one to be there okay so now I'm going to come over here and make some more shadows 
the shadow right here. Put some more black in this. It's coming out too brown. And I think before I finish that shot, I'm going to come over here. I think I want this to go all the way up here. There we go. Because he's in the photo, it's kind of hiding his mouth. Hmm, cute. So all we really have to do is finish a couple more shadows, do some details in this and on his feet and we really actually will be done. There wasn't really, I'm just going to put some white here to set the foundation for me to put the um, dark color over top. It'll be easier to blend it and show the, the shadow. Okay, so I'm gonna, and I want it, so that's too much. Wipe that off and just, I want it to go this direction like that. Okay, so see that? I mean, you're looking at that, and isn't that insane? I'm probably gonna come back and put a couple little white spots in, in certain areas, but um, by putting that in there, it kind of, you see how it gives it the illusion of, of a sheet. That was the whole point. Let me see. I'm trying to blend that. So now I'm just kind of scrubbing it in. Awesome. And then over here, just a couple little streaks. And then over here too. And you notice that when I come over here and it looks like it's, it's too dark, I just come and put some white over top of it. some white over here too because I felt that was a little bit too dark okay all right let me put okay so I'm gonna put some um, put some more white in certain places and I'm gonna come and work on him and believe it or not we're almost done that's really insane isn't it let me rinse out my brush because I want pure white I don't want I don't want my white contaminated as I'm highlighting it. If it still seems contaminated, I'll let the rest of this dry and then come back and put it, put the highlights later. So I'm just coming back and putting some more white in parts where I want it to be highlighted. I think I want some over here. Okay. And I think we're good there. I think I want to put a little bit up here. I want to outline his ear. Barely scrape it over top of that. Okay, I think that's good. Okay, so now let's work on him. First thing I want to do, I want to work on his eyes. So for his eyes, I am going to use my round brush. This is a, a number six round brush. So that's what I'm gonna use for his eyes. So we're gonna start off with the pupils. For his pupils, I'm going to start off with this dark mixture that we had, that had the burnt umber and the Mars black. Cause I don't want, this back here is already black and I just kind of want this to stand out. Let's see. No, we need more burn number. I don't want it all the way black, but I don't want it all the way brown. So I'm just going to go put it in there. Because his eyes are dark. 
I'm gonna put a teeny bit, just a teeny, teeny weensy little bitty piece of white on there. Just so I can see where it is. I'm gonna wipe that off and I'm gonna try to dry brush some of that in there. I'm going to put some black. And then put a put a mark in the eye right there. And right there. We'll add some more white to it in just a second. Now I'm going to come over here and do the same thing to this one. Same color. I'm gonna put a little bit of white around the edges so we can see it. Because remember, I always taught you that wherever there's a there's a dark, there's a light. So if you have something and it's dark and you can't see it, that means you need to put a light around it. And I'm, what I'm doing, I'm just trying to dry brush some of that white in there. Okay, so I'm gonna do something a little bit different than I did to this one. Okay, so obviously the light is coming this way. It's hitting um, Jet this way. So this side over here is a little bit, might be a little bit darker, and this over here has more light. So. This eye, this eye over here is gonna look a little bit darker than this one. So if you look closely at this eye in the reference photo, it has a little bit of a blue ring around it. So I'm gonna to try to see if I can get that ring on there. Just a little bit of a ring. So I'm gonna kinda... Of... So that has that, it's super cute. And around that blue ring, he has some, some white. I'm going to put a little bit of white around it. Going to make his pupil. Some straight black for his people. The eyes are everything. I know I keep saying that, but you got to get those eyes right. And sometimes I don't even get mine right. But I endeavor to do the best that I can because the eyes are, make all the difference. So I'm going to put a little bit of highlight in that eye. Probably put one around here. Okay, we got that. Okay. Now we're gonna do the inside of his eye. The inside of his eye is a combination of cad red, some burn umber. For those of you who are watching, um, it's the same color we used when we painted the Alaskan Husky Hercules for the, um, the nose and the gums and the teeth and the tongue. It's the same color. So it's cad red, burn umber, and a little bit of blue, in this case is ultramarine blue, and some white. Put some more white in there. Okay, that's gonna make the inside of the eye, so here we go. Because before this it wasn't even showing up, so now you can see it.
And what I would like to do um, also is that I want to go back and outline that with Mars Black. I'm going to outline that with Mars Black so you can see it more definitively. And I'm going to put some more white so you can really see it. Because like I said, it's all about the eyes, the cute eyes. And Jet looks like he has like an eyelash or something that's kind of hanging off. So I'm going to try to outline that eyelash. It kind of comes over here like that. It kind of hangs off like that. And I think that's something that's indicative of bulldogs because I think Cutie Pie had one too when we were painting Cutie Pie. And I'm also going to come down here and outline this part of his eye. Maybe Cutie Pie is a she. We still, we, I, I think, I don't know if we ever got the, the information about what distinguishes a, um, a female from a male. Just give me. Okay, so I am gonna get some yellow ochre. And it's just gonna be it's a little teeny bit of yellow ochre, just a little bit. That's gonna get a little bit like that. Because I took some of this um, mixture here and I added some white to it, and now I just want to put a little yellow ochre. And that needs to go in here in this part. And it needs to go over here. Okay? So the top of his eye his eye um eyelid is highlighted white. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the white in there. So I think Cutie Pie might be a female, Octavia. Might just be a female. Might just be. And I'm trying to bring some of that down like that there. Okay, so we need some more light because I, you know, I can't see the dark. So I'm going to put light right there. This is white that I'm putting, you know, you probably can't see because my white right there. And then I'm going to come down and put some, um, well, let me do this other eye first. Let's put that mixture in here now. Put some of it over here. put some of that yellow ochre color in the inside right here. Some of it back here. We're going to outline it with the black, kind of like a an eyelash in a sense. We're going to come up here and go for it. going to outline this bottom part. If I think those eyelashes are too long, I'm, I'm probably going to just go over top of them. Okay, so we also have to, whenever there's a dark, there's a light, so we got to put light up here. We have to put some more light over here because we don't have enough of it. Oh, I know what I need to do. Sorry. I did it on the other one. I have to outline this some more. Just a little more. And then highlight it. You know, I forgot to ask, how is everybody doing today? I hope everybody's doing fine or trying to do the best that you can consider all that we're going through. I usually get caught up in my paintings, which might be a good thing. But sometimes, um, let's put a little bit of a highlight over here. 
and I need to put some some white down here like I did on the other one so you can see it he is so cute Tavi look at those eyes I'm telling you, the eyes make make the difference. She, I'm sorry, she. I'm thinking maybe she's a she. Okay, so let me do the nose really fast, and then we'll start adding all this color to the inside of the ears, the um, underneath the eyes. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and do it underneath the eyes. I'm going to get some Cad Red, the same mixture, Burn Umber, Ultramarine Blue, and I'm going to try to make a whole bunch of it because I'm going to need a lot of it and some white. So I'm gonna put a little bit more ultramarine blue and burn umber. Put some more of that white. I don't want it I don't want it as light as this part, but I do want it to, to show up some. I'm gonna put a little bit more, you know what? I'm gonna put some Mars black in it. Just a little bit. There there we go. Because I'm trying to tone it back, I don't want it too. I don't want it too bright, and that's going to be all of this, um, the sh the shadow. I mean, the highlight on. Um, there we go. That's exactly what I needed. But I'm moving on, moving back to my angle brush. Okay, so let me get some of that because some of that goes under here. The shadow. Kind of wipe some of that off. Try to dry brush it on there. And then let me see, put some over here too. dry brush it on there oh my goodness she is so I'm, I'm just gonna say well he she you decide gonna get a little bit of white to highlight that you know it's funny I did a um how are we doing on time, Tavia? Doing good? I did a digital painting. Uh, digital art is, is way different than, than um, this, you know, regular art. And um, you got to really go for realism. Okay, I'm going to put in the ears with that same color. Put a little, gonna put some gray in there too. A little bit of white. She is so cute. Okay, put a little bit more white for a highlight. I might come back later and do a highlight. Okay, so we're gonna come over to the other other ear. Put some of that gray mixture. And then some white. I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way. It's kind of hard sometimes. More white than anything. It's got to have that highlight. Got a little bit more of a highlight over here. Okay, so I'm going to um, put some highlight on the nose. 
And I can tell you right now, um, I'm going to come put some brown over here on this part so we're not seeing those lines. I'm going to go and blend them in. Okay, so I'm going to do the nose. I'm going to get my round brush and do the nose so you can see the highlights. Okay, so I'm going to I'm just going to put the black in here. And now I'm going to put some white so we can see, so we can actually see his nose. So the white is really going to help us see the nose. I'm going to dry brush the rest of it. So remember I told you whenever there's a light you um, or dark, you put a light. And so we're putting this in here so we can actually see the, the nose. That might be a little bit too much right there, but... So I'm going to put some highlights around that so we can see it. Put some around there so you can see it. And I'm actually going to put some around the nose so you can actually see the nose. I'm going to put a line through the middle here so you can see it. How are we doing on time, Tavia? Okay. All right. I'm just going to put some little speckles. I'm actually going to put a, a little line right there. That will hopefully give dimension to the nose. put it back and just lost some of it. I just love understand, you know, well, I can't say I understand it very well, but I'm learning that when you put light on stuff, and I'm going to put a couple little dots because he has dots all over the place. Yes, yeah, so I'm down here too. The indentation. This is supposed to be an implication that there's some whisker somewhere. Okay. I'm going to add a little bit of white to this mixture that I had for here. And I'm going to come and put a little bit of that here to give it, to show that this has um, lighting. And then we are done. Put more white than anything because we need to, I'm going to put a little yellow ochre. Just gonna put a little bit so you can look like so you can see it as, as the highlight from the sun on his on her slash his body and that's the reason why I'm doing this and then down here so you can see it on the tip of his little toes okay. okay and there was a little little bit down here. I'm going to make it real light because I don't want it too overpowering. Some here too. You want to put too much? I'm going to block it out. And really fast we need to give some um, some wrinkles because after all he she is laying down so we want to show the wrinkles.
and some dark up here. It's a little bit of dark. And then some right here. Okay. All right. Um, that's it for Jet. Um, feel free to go through and add more details to it. I hope you enjoy this tutorial on our dog series. And um, once again, hit the subscription button and the notification button. That way you'll be aware of our future art tutorials. Bye for now.